Now, smooth muscle is a little bit different. And in smooth muscle, you have the same initial process going on where you have an action potential spreading down a nerve and reaching the motor end plate. And when it reaches the motor end plate, just like in skeletal muscle, it causes opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. And calcium will enter into the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber. But at this point, things get a little bit different from skeletal muscle. So the key to understanding smooth muscle contraction is to just remember that when myosin is phosphorylated, it's much more likely to interact with actin, and you'll get contraction. So that's the key to keeping all this straight in your mind. Just remember that when myosin gets phosphorylated, it's more likely to interact with actin, and you're more likely to get contraction. So with that in mind, let's think about how this works. When calcium enters the cytoplasm, it binds a molecule called calmodulin. And when calcium binds to calmodulin, it activates a protein called myosin light chain kinase. And as you should know, a kinase is a molecule that phosphorylates. So when you have myosin light chain kinase being activated, that molecule is going to start to phosphorylate myosin. And as I just said, phosphorylated myosin is more likely to interact with actin and you will get contraction of the smooth muscle. Now, in order to stop the contraction, a molecule called myosin light chain phosphatase will remove the phosphate from the myosin and then you'll have a naked myosin without a phosphate on it, and that naked myosin is less likely to interact with actin, and you will get relaxation of the smooth muscle. And this has pharmacologic consequences because certain drugs, such as nitrates, will actually start to affect this process. So how do nitrates affect the process? Well, nitric oxide, for example, is going to increase the activity of an enzyme called guanylate cyclase. And as you may know, this enzyme produces something called CGMP, or cyclic GMP. And CGMP actually inhibits myosin light chain kinase. So if you have a lot of CGMP around because you've given a patient nitric oxide, you get inhibition of myosin light chain kinase, less phosphorylation of myosin, and less smooth muscle contraction. So the muscle will relax, and that's why nitric oxide causes vasodilation.